The trip to Tahoe has been anything but smooth to this point, averaging only 221 miles traveled per day, a far cry from the 575 that usually roll. The boys really need to put a good shift together if they're going to make California in time for the aquatic species inspection. Adding to the mounting pressure, the next customer, who chose Team Hurricane third to transport his yacht from Missouri to the East Coast, continues to call Ian Daly for updates and time estimates. This path the road leads me down ain't the same one others see. In addition to that, the current customer, Jefferson Beach, has a new yacht closing in on completion, three weeks behind schedule at the factory in New Jersey, with the new owner fretting about summer disappearing fast. The team is scheduled to pick up that vessel when it's completed. The dominoes are stacking up quickly. A good Sunday drive is badly needed. Scared to put it down as it gets me to the next town. And if that's wrong, well, at least you know you can always blame me. Cause I'm high and I'm low. This roller coaster is out of control. Great run through Nebraska brings Team Hurricane to Cheyenne, Wyoming port of entry during business hours. This not so small fact will save a few hours of daylight tomorrow and saving daylight is always a big deal. Alright, so this is the Wyoming uh, port of entry. Uh, so certain vehicles, trucks uh, have to have uh, certain paperwork to come into the state of Wyoming. We're hauling a watercraft so they don't want uh, any other uh, sort of wildlife or any of that kind of thing uh, being brought into their waterways and lakes. So uh, we have to stop here. They'll check our paperwork, check our weight, check our permits. Um, just kind of check out our load and make sure that we're good to go and enter Wyoming. Things are different out west. Ian's permit service called ahead to let Wyoming know the yacht would be coming through. But instead of emailing a permit over ahead of time, Ian must head into the port of entry to pay for it and pick it up in person. No problem. Wow, I remember giving you clearance last day of my work. You did? Yeah. All right, so I need your truck's registration and your Okay. Absolutely. If they want to fax it or email it, they can. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Whoever's next, please. And you're going Nebraska to Idaho on 30? Uh, I, I, don't, I didn't know the route. Do you guys tell us? or? So we need to know where you came in from. Oh, I'm sorry. Nebraska, and we need to know where you're going, where you're planning to exit the state. Okay. Because if you got Utah permits, we need to take you out to Utah, Idaho, the same. We have Idaho. Okay. And uh, do they have you getting out on the U.S. 30? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I've never heard that. Too much paperwork. Thank you. Idaho, U.S. 30 from Wyoming line. Okay. 
the number you gave us, we recorded everything we needed to know. Okay, cool. That's pretty cool. We don't get out here very often. Do I need to pull over to your watercraft check station? Uh, you will. Okay. Uh, if nobody's there, then you can proceed. Is it touching? It's, it's not touching water. Yeah. So you just, if somebody's there, stop and tell them that. If there's nobody there, you can proceed. Okay. Cool. You comfortable going through 14 foot wide restrictions? Yeah. Did I fit on on your scale? All yeah. the way? Could, can you share the numbers with me? Because I I have an idea of what we are. But. Crystal, did you weigh the boat? Was it hurricane? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know it was over So we clocked you grossing 98,260. Okay. <clears throat> we have an issue. There's an issue. That's never good. Okay. There's a 13 foot wide restriction on US 30. Oh, there is? There is. Where at? Like at the line? At US 30. You can't get onto US 30. Oh, okay. Um, is there another way on? The only way that you can get out onto, into Idaho is if you go up to 191 to 189 to US 26 into Alpine Junction. We can drop you down onto US 89 to catch either 89 or US 30 to go into Idaho or you, we can take you into Utah and you can catch up there. But I can't take you out on US 30 if you're coming from this way. There's no way to get on there? Nope. Because I have uh, Idaho permits that are at US 30. Home. Already aware that the yacht's too tall to come into Utah, Ian now finds out that as of yesterday, there's a 13 foot wide restriction on the route the team needs to get into Idaho. Here, I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> So currently, we're about right. right here. Yep. So 191, go up here to 189 to US 26, drop down. You would take 89 all the way down to US 30 to get out there. Holy cow. That's the only option that I can offer you right now with the restrictions that is going on. Or 80 into Utah. Um. This looks a lot better. It does. It's less miles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't really want to drag it through the mountains. I don't blame you. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. He is going to Utah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Jackson Hole would be great in a car. Yes, yes it would. <laughs> okay. So the route I've got you taking, we are now changing Nebraska to Utah. I-80, exit 364, where you'll turn onto, um, onto College Drive, you'll make a left, you take a loop all the way around. Get onto I-25 northbound, go up to exit 8B. It's a uh, turn. It's one of those little loop things to get back on Roundabout? Time. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not a roundabout. Oh, okay. It's just a tighter turn than what normally is. Okay. On and on. Continue, get onto I-80, ramp exit 357, continue on I-80 the rest of the way. Okay. Does that, on the permit, does it say all that? Yep. Or should I be writing that down? <laughs> So I've got you going Nebraska to Utah, I-80, exit 364, Wyoming 212, also known as College Drive, and that's down, that's a left turn, Okay. onto I-25 northbound. Okay. Exit 8B, okay. that's very important, otherwise you're going to hit a 12-foot wide restriction. Okay. I-80, ramp exit 357, so just off and back on, okay. continue on I-80. Okay. Three days to get her done, dimensions, weights with axle spacing, safety provisions. Price breakdown, signature on that bottom line. Tired, sore, and faced with no viable options on a Sunday evening, Ian decides for certain he's not taking the yacht and team through the Grand Tetons. Instead, he asks for a permit to keep heading west as far as they can tomorrow. 
He hopes while they're traveling, his permit service will find a new route out of Wyoming to keep them moving. We'll just stop in Cheyenne then. Let me figure out where we can park. Yeah. We're supposed to go up into go up and go into Idaho. And so now they tell me there's a 13 restriction going into Idaho. So our option was to run all the way up to Jackson Hole, up 10,000 feet, the Tetons, and then come back down. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Well, we could send you into 80, into Utah on 80. And I'm like, okay. But Utah said we can't come in on 80. So I don't know. I already have a Idaho permit and a Utah permit for the original route. And now they just changed it. Wyoming. But they said if, if you have an issue, call us. So let's, uh, I think I'd like to get fuel tonight So while I'm dirty. So let me, give me five minutes. We'll figure out a place to get fuel and park. Well, I just have to tell them we're not unloading in Wyoming, so they don't need to look at it. And, uh, and then we'll just go to Cheyenne, and, or we'll find a truck stop in Cheyenne and someplace to park and a hotel and someplace to eat. The Sap Brothers Truck Stop offers a spot to top off the tanks and safely park the rig for the night. But being this big, even getting fuel isn't simple. The truck with the boat is too wide to pull straight after fueling. So each time they get fuel, Cross and Tom yeah, must bad. direct Ian as he backs out of the pumps. Now here. Yeah. The good news is the team had a great day of travel. Ian will fight the next battle tomorrow. Cross puts cones around the truck to keep other trucks from parking too close. She wants a cowboy, so I just might find me some boots that fit me right. A long day on the trail. Still, it was the kind of day the team needed since they left Kenosha. Now it's time for a hot meal and a comfortable bed for everyone that is except Ian, who always has plenty of work to do. But I'll find me one that fits my head She won't know any of that I keep walking this town Trying to get me some advice But all the ranch hands around Keep on saying they want to fight And I learned a two-step So I can spin her Off her pretty little country feet If she wants a cowboy Then I'll be as cowboy As a cowboy can be Find me a I can cover Find me some stars to sleep on Find me a train I'll hop out west If she wants a cowboy I'll cowboy the best Sun up Normally it's time to roll But the permit service back in Ohio Didn't come up with the solution yesterday So the boys can't move This leaves Ian no choice he and Tom will drive the lead escort to scout a new route that doesn't have any overhead obstructions. This will cost several hours, but there's no other option. On a positive note, it will give Ian a chance to scout the route before driving it with the truck. In the state of Utah, we're required to have a, a roof-mounted uh, oversized load sign, so we we just raise it up in the back so it's considered a roof mounted. Tom and I and scouting worked. They found a route and called it into the permit service. So while they were traveling back to meet the team, the amended Wyoming and now the new Utah and Idaho permits have arrived. 
Yeah, you heard that right. Three more permits purchased due to the unexpected road construction. With this delay, Ian has calculated that they can't make the aquatic inspection station on the 28th. He calls Tony to see if they can push it back a day to the 29th. Set me free, set me free. I need a little more room to breathe. And the freedom to do it, I please. Mama, set me free. Set me free, set me free. Let me see what I can see. Have mercy on a boy like me. Mama, set me free. Drop me off on a mountaintop somewhere. I point them down and say my prayers. No one understands it. Maybe they don't care. We're only here because it's there. Set me free, set me free. I wanna be what I can be. Say living and living in me. I'm set me free. Set me free, set me free Let me see what I can see Have mercy on a boy like me I'm set me free After slugging it out for over four hours over the mountains on mostly two-lane roads, the team has reached I-15 north of Brigham City, only to find out the on-ramp is closed for, what else? Construction! Time for Cross and Tom to ask nicely, if we can sneak onto the highway. We're supposed to get on there and the ramp's closed. What's that? Yeah, go do that. I see him over there. Watch the crosswalk. So, if the if the crosswalk is white and the people can cross, that means the light's not going to change. So if you see it counting down, you can tell how long you have to get through the intersection. So, like this one is white. So even though the car's sitting there, it's still it, people are still able to cross. So you know the light's not going to change. So, but you have to watch when it's blinking. <laughs> that's when it's going to change. Out. With the beauty of the Great Salt Lake and the Bonneville Salt Flats out the window, and with Nevada over the mountains dead ahead, the captain has a few moments to share his thoughts on the trip so far. I don't even know what day this is. It's day eight, I guess, of our trip. So anyway, we're uh, somewhere here in the middle of the Utah desert, coming into uh, Nevada, the end of day eight. 
we're about two days behind where we want it to be. Um, all in all, I mean, it's not a bad trip. It's getting more beautiful as we go west. Uh, the boat is in great shape. Uh, the shrink wrap came off uh, somewhere in the middle of Iowa. It failed, so we cut it off. Um, but uh, as far as the boat goes, I mean, there's no issues with the boat. It stayed put right where we put it when we loaded it in Kenosha. So, you know, we're happy about that. The equipment's running good, knock on wood. Uh, the pole car guy is doing awesome. The rear guy is doing awesome. So, uh, but it didn't start that good. You know, it, it, uh, I've been telling some of my inside people, so I'll share this with you guys. Um, you know, this takes a lot of planning and uh, it, it, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, I'm a very organized person. I like my team to be organized. And uh, we were kind of put behind an eight ball from the start. So this was in probably the first week of June. They wanted the truck for that date. So uh, we sent them a contract and they signed it and sent it back right away, but we didn't get a deposit. And it's our policy that we don't start working and spending money on a trip until we have a deposit because everyone needs to have equal skin in the game. And so I called and found out, well, the customer that was uh, buying the boat hadn't had it surveyed yet. So they were gonna survey it on June the 12th, or no, excuse me, June the 13th. And uh, they they were flying in to the area on the 12th. So anyway, uh, this is a long story. I'll shorten it up. but. The survey went great, and then the, the buyer bought the boat, and then the customer uh, sent us a deposit. But they we didn't receive it until June the 14th. So we started working on this on the, no, excuse me, on the 15th. We started working on this trip on the 15th. So 15th is a Thursday, 16th is a Friday, 19th, as everyone knows, is our holiday, Juneteenth. Everyone's closed. One file plane got active, ramp up. So anyway, instead of having all the permits lined up, they started coming in piecemeal, and that makes it hard because we like to work on our routing. They like to put sheets like this together, where you know everyone knows where we're going. Instead of having to read a permit, it's a lot easier to read big print. So that just kind of put us behind the eight ball from the start, and we've been fighting that all the way across the country. We got Nevada permits early, Utah permits, uh, Idaho, uh, but we couldn't get Wisconsin and Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska. So uh, anyway, it got super frustrating. Uh, but as Tom likes to say, Team Hurricane, adapt and overcome. And that's what we've been doing. So uh, we're excited that tomorrow we're hoping to be in California and they're going to do their aquatic invasive species inspection of the boat where they're going to find nothing because the boat came out of salt water but uh and then after that we're into lake tahoe and finally we can unload this thing and start heading back east and uh so that's where we are right now it's uh like i said it's been a fun trip everyone stayed positive uh this is a great team i think it's the best team out here but you know, I might brag a little bit. Team Hurricane isn't just a group of faceless Facebook characters. Oh, they're characters all right, but they're extremely talented, dedicated people that do a job that not many people can do. Well, here, let the captain tell you a little more about his team. So Tom was our rear escort, and he was awesome. And uh, when Mark started to stay home more, we wanted to see if Tom would be interested in being our pole bar guy. So we offered him more money, which is always a good thing. Wow. And uh, eased him into it. Not super big loads like this one, but you know, some high loads, but not really high loads. Just to get him build up his confidence. And uh, anyway, uh, I'd say he's on par with Mark. And that's saying a lot, because I think Mark is one of the finest pole car guys I've ever met. And I think Tom is, is right there with him. So um, I have total confidence. And the nice thing is, uh, it's a team. So it's always Tom, it's always Cross. It's always, you know, we're all together. We work as a team, we get to know each other. And I think that's the secret of, the secret sauce, so to speak, the secret of our success. 
So let me talk a little bit about my rear escort, uh, Cross Draca. So I first met Cross uh, because I dated his mom. So his mom and I were uh, together for a long time. And uh, so that's how I met Cross. Uh, actually, about 11 years ago this week, uh, he went on his first boat haul with me. We moved a big boat down to Cincinnati. I think he was 11, probably, or 12. And so apparently he got the bug. I didn't realize it at the time, but he did. So uh, things didn't work out with uh, his mom and I, uh, but um, he and I always stayed in touch and he always seemed to show an interest in what we were doing here. But he also uh, had some rough patches growing up. So I never lost faith in him. I never lost confidence, but uh, there were some times, you know, that I was uh, disappointed in him. But, uh, about a year ago, uh, out of the blue, he called me and said, you know, he wanted to come to work for us and he came to work and he's really done a great job. And what I want to say before that is he really turned his life around and I'm super proud of him for what he's uh, become, the man he's become, he's reestablished a relationship with his father. I'm really excited about that. And he's really blossoming into a heck of a rear escort. Uh, he's also done a little pole work uh, up front as our lead pole man. We kind of had a couple runs that we kind of, you know, got his speed web with that. He did a great job. He does a great job up on top of the boats. I mean, I can't get up there anymore. He scurries up like a little uh, ringtail lever. And uh, he's up on top fixing things, putting our protective gear over. So uh, he has an interest in getting his CDL and uh, sitting in this seat one day, and I, I would be so excited for him to do that. I hope he does. Uh, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of experience, but uh, he's putting in the time, and uh, he's got a great attitude, and I couldn't be prouder of him, and again, I, I'm so excited to have the guy in front and the guy in back. I mean, this is, uh, this is a rock solid team. I don't think there's a better one out there. Well said, Captain, well said. Would you want any other group of people moving your yacht across the country? I know I wouldn't. Guitar and hit the highway. It doesn't take too long to pack when an empty seat holds everything you own. And I found comfort knowing with a moment's notice I could grow. After all, I'm probably better off. Tony, the owner, sent Ian a text to let him know the inspection appointment has been pushed back a day, but if they don't make it by 8 a.m. on the 29th, he doesn't know when the boat will get inspected. She called me. Her voice had seemed to change as if it aged out, oh, it wasn't long ago. She said, lately I've been thinking, maybe you could come back. Yeah.